Uh, so to start with uh, silos, these are just some example silos of, uh, of data inside of a, a construction company. There are very few systems uh, that are connected together. Uh, the norm is data is created inside of a silo, does not flow to other silos. Uh, information is constantly recreated uh, by different departments. Uh, very rarely flows from pre-con through construction uh, is, is quite often created. And that not only wastes a lot of time, uh, it's a, a huge opportunity to introduce errors into the process. So what, at VICO, what we're trying to enable uh, is to break through these silos, connect the different departments together, let the data flow, let it be reused. And I'll talk uh, as we go forward about how we're doing that. Uh, of course, as many of you have probably seen before, uh, the, the core part of our data flow is how we connect things from, from a 3D model. Uh, so for example, we could take a very basic box uh, inside of a 3D model that represents a column, uh, but modeling systems don't know what that column represents as far as tasks you have to perform and items that you need to buy to perform them. Uh, so what we do in our system is we connect that, that box in a CAD model uh, to the things that you need to do to get that built. So a column, you have to erect the rebar, erect the formwork, pour the concrete, put on whatever the cladding is. Uh, inside of our system, that's non-graphical data. Uh, it's really best represented by uh, the combination of the cost plan and the scheduling plan, uh, but is designed to be connected to the model. What the model can do is give you very accurate information about the number of these columns and then properties from these columns. So for example, the surface area, vertical surface area in particular that would be used for, uh, for formwork and cladding volume that would be used for the concrete <coughs> and other properties that you would no longer need to calculate manually. Uh, this layer really represents tasks or the methods. Uh, we subdivide those into the labor equipment and material that you have to purchase uh, to build that object. This content is highly reusable. So on every project, you're, you're probably going to have concrete columns. Uh, the formulas may vary a little bit for the rebar. <clears throat> the cladding will vary according to the design. Uh, but for the most part, once you have the content, uh, it's highly reusable and it makes it much faster uh, to produce an estimate. Whenever the design is changed, uh, the estimate will be updated. If the size of the columns are changing, for example, uh, the volume will flow through to formulas uh, inside of the resource level and that will be used to update the cost. So that represents the data flow that we use to connect the model to cost, but not yet really to time. Yes, this layer does represent tasks, but uh, it's too granular uh, for the way we want to plan and control schedules. And if we had 500 columns in the project, you wouldn't want to have four methods for each one of them. You wouldn't want to have 2,000 tasks essentially to track. So we needed to aggregate these back together to match how you really do plan construction today. Uh, and we do that by adding zones to the model. Some zones are already inherent in the model, for example, floors. Uh, but on top of those, we can also draw zones, so essentially just draw a boundary to represent zone one, a boundary to represent zone two. And then the system can look at zone one and say, uh, is there anything that is concrete inside of zone one? If there is, a poor concrete task is automatically created. Everything that is concrete, so for example the slab, uh, will be cut automatically by our system. So it will be separated at zone one and zone two will calculate the quantities that exist inside of zone one. So you get location-based quantities automatically from our system. Uh, if you add a production rate uh, for how fast your crew can consume those quantities uh, provided from either the super or the subcontractors, uh, then we're able to calculate the duration of those activities and generate a schedule. So what the scheduler does is add the logic and also work on balancing the schedule uh, manipulating it to, to make it faster and also to reduce risk in the system. They don't have to worry about task creation, duration calculation. That actually comes as automated behavior from the system. Because the cost plan drove the schedule to begin with, the schedule is automatically cost and resource loaded if you did estimate at a resource level. Uh, that's important to point out that you can be as granular as you want 
uh, in this data structure, uh, if you're working at a very high level, if you're a CM, you don't self-perform anything, uh, you can work at a subcontractor level of granularity. Uh, if you're uh, self-performing this, or if you want to track your subs at a very detail, detailed level, you can have very detailed resources, detailed tasks. Uh, the system will support either method. Now, regardless, whenever the design is changing, that will flow back through the system uh, and the schedule, uh, again, the, the resource loaded, the cost loaded schedule uh, will be automatically updated. Uh, so a lot of the manual work uh, that is required in both cost planning and in schedule planning and control is automated, allowing the, the estimator and the scheduler uh, to spend time on more high value activities, focusing on optimization. Uh, now a little bit about enterprise technology. Uh, as many of you have seen Vico Office, uh, we created that, uh, we started working on that project almost seven years ago uh, to try to create a platform uh, where we could add modules on top of that uh, to essentially serve the needs of all aspects of construction planning and management. Uh, so we have a variety of different modules, uh, modules that are focused on schedule planning and control, on takeoff and cost, document management you'll see coming up from us uh, later this year, constructability management uh, we already have, uh, and you'll see other aspects of the project being supported. Under each of these aspects, uh, we have a variety of different modules to explore the data, so essentially to analyze it, uh, read the data that is created, uh, plan, uh, creating the data, and then control is essentially how we achieve the plan, how we compare uh, to the plan. And then manage is uh, the combination of all these things. Uh, so for different aspects, uh, we'll either have a plan and control module or we'll have a manage module. Uh, some things where we have advanced data analysis, we'll have an explorer module like we have cost explorer today. Now, so we have this suite of modules uh, that run on top of a common platform, uh, run on top of a single database, and they're all connected together. Uh, we do read data from a lot of external systems, uh, or connect to external systems uh, to read the data. Now, those include uh, BIM systems, uh, so essentially uh, Autodesk Revit, uh, Tecla, ArchiCAD, CADduct. We read in IFC files. Uh, we recently added support to SketchUp. Uh, you'll see more formats uh, offered from us uh, throughout the year. Of course, we also connect to other systems, like in this project, Primavera read in Excel data. Uh, so we can take data from a lot of external systems. We can connect to them. Uh, but we handle a lot of the planning and management of, uh, as required for construction uh, inside our VECO office suite. The core of that is really the 5D data flow. Again, as we talked about earlier, using the model uh, to drive cost and time. Uh, the benefit of that is we can predict the impact of change uh, in any other system, uh, whether it's a uh, completely traditional planning or whether it's uh, uh, more blueware systems where you, you manually have to connect together cost and time. Uh, using this data flow, we're able to predict the impact of change. Uh, so if you increase the length of a wall, for example, we're able to very accurately predict the impact that will have on time and also on cost. 